everyone, it's Rachel with King Floral Design. I am back and excited to share this week some winter houseplant care basics. Winter houseplant care, kind of a long title, but yes, winter houseplant care basics. I'm excited to share just some tips and tricks for you to use in your own home to keep your green little planties happy and healthy this winter. So as you may know, I am a floral designer, lover of all things floral, but I also love me some plants. So I'm excited to share. I have roughly over, I want to say a hundred houseplants at the moment. Um, and taking care of them just brings me so much joy. So I hope that you can really use these tips in your own home to keep your babies thriving through the winter time. Please follow along to the very end. And if you do like, subscribe, comment, and share, I really, really appreciate it. I'm new to this YouTube thing, so it's been really, really fun. Definitely a learning curve. And I can't wait to see you next week. Thanks guys, bye. Alrighty, so let's talk about light. So in the winter time, the sun can move up to 50% lower in the sky. So that's really providing a lot less light than what your plants are used to. So what you can do, um, there's actually a couple things that you can do. The first thing that you can try is moving your plant closer to a light source. So that means moving it closer to a window, um, kind of trying out different spots around the house maybe. Um, if you are moving your spot your spot your plant closer to a window make sure that you don't put it too close because a lot of winds windows are poorly insulated so if you move it too close to the window then that ambient temperature around the plant is going to be really really cold and it, it'll damage the foliage of your plant most likely so if you move it closer to a window just something to be wary of um, one thing that you can do is actually cleaning your windows so wiping down both sides of your windows to make sure that there's enough light going through um, the third thing and i don't really do this but i mean i do and i don't so the third thing that you can do is invest in some grow lights um, i don't really necessarily have grow lights hanging around my house for my plants but i do have them in some of the terrariums that we've set up so we have about four terrariums right now just kind of in our back room and they all have grow lights they are, they are planted so um, we're letting them grow in for about like three months until we introduce some uh, reptiles, some crested geckos into them. Um, so we have those and they all set up with grow lights and it's kind of interesting because you can see the plants growing up to the light. So it does work. Um, it's a solution if you don't have a ton of light. We actually live in Phoenix, Arizona, so that's not a really big problem for us. But if that is something that you're dealing with, then I would recommend looking into it. The next thing that I want to talk about is temperature. So most of our houseplant have plants House plants are subtropical and tropical varieties of plants, so they don't really like to go below a certain temperature. Um, anything below 50 would probably damage them, um, but they like to hang out around 65 to 75 degrees. So in the wintertime, it's not really common for people to hang out below 50 degrees inside of their own homes so i don't really see that being an issue but one thing that i have noticed is that if you place your plants too close to a draft or a vent um, it can really cause some problems so just make sure that you're placing your plant so that it's away from any heating vents radiators whatever um, because that can cause an issue humidity when you're running the heater in the winter time you're pretty much drying up all of the air wherever you're living in your house your apartment wherever you are so it's really important to kind of get the humidity levels back up to what I mean you probably would uh, do well with higher humidity humidity levels in your home too um, but plants like to hang out around like 40 to 50 percent humidity uh, for subtropicals and tropicals which most house plants house plants are um, so to get it back up to that humidity level, there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, the first one is invest in a simple mister. So I actually have two that I like to use. I have this cute little guy, oh so small, cute. And then I have this big daddy. So this guy has a pump. It's, it's really awesome. I've taken it to music festivals before. It's woo, refreshing on a hot day. Um, so you basically just give them a spritz most of your plants will enjoy it uh, it helps to create humidity another thing that you can do is create a humidity tray so i don't know if you've ever seen those clay they're called um hydroponic balls or let's see aquaponic you can find them in like aquarium supply stores but it's basically um clay clay balls and what i do is put them into like a small dish 
just fill it up with uh, the clay pebbles and then I pour a little bit of distilled water and I set my pot or my plant that needs some more humidity on top of the uh, clay pebbles. So basically what the idea is, is that the water will evaporate from those clay pebbles and kind of create more humidity in the, in the room. So I've done that before. I also have a humidifier. So I, it's kind of nerdy, but I have a little corner in the house where I have all my really high humidity plants and I keep them there. I have a humidifier that's running. I have like my Spanish moss, my calathea, <laughs> lots of good stuff. Um, but I keep that humidifier running and I feel like the plants freaking love it. It is a game changer and I enjoy it too because in the winter I am like a crusty, dry shell of a person <laughs> that I once was. So I crank that humidifier, I run it pretty much every day and my plants love it and I love it and no complaints there. Moving on to water. In the winter time, your plants definitely don't need as much water. So that was something that I kind of struggled with when I first started owning plants was really moving with the seasons. So in the summer in Phoenix, you really gotta be watering your plants. I felt like all the time. And then as I started to transition in the seasons, even though it wasn't really cooler, my plants were still transitioning and I drowned a couple of my babies, my plant babies, and it was devastating, but I think I've learned my lesson. And one thing that's really helped me with that is investing in one of these tools. So this one's kind of fancy. Um, you don't have to get one like this, but it's basically a moisture meter. It reads light and then it can tell you the pH of the soil with these two probes. So you just stick it down, um, you avoid the root ball and you stick it down as far as you can to really see if that root moisture is there. Um, and then it'll give you a reading from dry to wet. So one to 10, um, super awesome. I actually got it for my dad. He kind of has a brown thumb and I was the same way a long time ago, um, but it really, really helped him and he loves it. So. Super cool gadget to have. I think I got it from Lowe's for like less than $10. Um, if you don't have one of these, so I used to do the knuckle test and I would stick my finger in the soil and if it felt dry, I would water it. If it was wet, I wouldn't water it. And that system works sometimes, but it doesn't work for all plants and it definitely is just not super reliable. Um, so I have went to a gardening center in my neighborhood and I talked to somebody and she recommended getting a dowel. So just a really long skinny wooden stick. And what you do, same thing kind of with like the moisture meter, um, you stick the dowel in avoiding the root ball as far as you can go. So like really trying to hit the bottom of the pot. And if you pull that dowel up and it's kind of like brownie batter on the end, then it still doesn't need to be watered. It's still wet. Um, so that's a great tip because you can stick your finger in and even if you're like all the way down to your second knuckle, um, it's gonna feel dry, but then at the roots it's wet. So make sure that you're checking that your plant is dry um, before you water it because you just don't wanna drown your little guys during the winter because you don't know. Um, another thing that I've kind of started doing, my boyfriend doesn't, he's not, really into it as much as I am, but it's picking the pots up and kind of feeling by their weight whether or not they need water. So I don't know how I started doing this, but I kind of would just notice like after I picked a pot, a pot up, um, after it had been watered, just the difference in weight. So you can kind of use that as a, a guidance um, along the way. So. I like to soak a lot of my plants from the bottom. So I'll just soak it until I pick the pot up and it's like a similar weight to what I felt. And that's kind of a weird way to do it. I don't know if a lot of people do that. Comment down below if you're one of the one of the ones that do it that way. Um, but I find that it really works. And it's kind of a quick and dirty way to like go around your house and pick the pots up and just know when it's time. Uh, so yeah. Don't water your plants too much. If you can, invest in a moisture meter or just a cheap, inexpensive dowel to really make sure that your plants are dry before you're watering them again. Um, I would say about like 95% of plants really like to dry out before they're watered again. Um, so it's huge. Just conserve water, save your plants, and we're all happy. Just a couple more things that I wanted to touch on. Um, fertilizing your plants in the winter, 
some plants do go dormant, especially you, if you live in a place where it gets really, really chilly in the winter. Um, so I wouldn't recommend fertilizing. I have read and heard from some people that if you are gonna fertilize, maybe dilute your fertilizer and that shouldn't cause any problems. Um, personally, I don't fertilize in the winter. Maybe I will in the future, but that's kind of just where I'm at right now. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about on top of fertilizer was repotting and taking cuttings. A lot of people don't recommend repotting plants in the winter time, um, just because plants kind of need everything that they have during winter. So if you're repotting a plant, it's really stressful on them and it probably just won't have the best outcome. So I've, been told and I'm taking the recommendations not to repot your plants in the winter. Um, I have some really awesome pots and like so many cool projects that I want to get to but I'm holding back. I'm not taking cuttings right now. I'm not repotting. Um, I do prune still so if some things are fading or whatever or getting leggy I will prune them um, but I'm not taking cuttings to propagate or anything like that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was super fun for me to share some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up. Um, I can't wait to share again next week. Like I said, please like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. I'll be sharing new videos and content every single Thursday, so you can expect to find stuff similar to this. Pretty much everything botanical. If you're a botanical lover, you're in the right place, so please hit the subscribe subscribe button. I'll see you next week. Eh. See you next week. Bye guys. Thanks.